Did you know that 43% of people with NMO spectrum disorder were initially misdiagnosed as having MS? My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in this video, I'm gonna help demystify NMO spectrum disorder, neuromyelitis optica. Now don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I'm not gonna be talking about MS exactly, but rather a cousin of multiple sclerosis, a nasty condition called NMOSD, or neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder. Now that is a mouthful and there's a lot to unpack. So get out paper and pencil and let's jump in. What exactly is NMO and how exactly is it different than multiple sclerosis? Well, for starters, there are a lot of similarities, and so I like to begin by reviewing them. Both multiple sclerosis and neuromyelitis optica are autoimmune conditions, so they both involve an aberrant immune system attacking stuff it's not supposed to. Both MS and NMO involve the central nervous system. They both involve the brain, optic nerves, and spinal cord. Both multiple sclerosis and NMO can cause attacks, of optic neuritis or transverse myelitis. And so as you can imagine, there's a lot of similarities and you can see how one condition might be misdiagnosed for the other. But that's really where the similarities stop. There's a tremendous amount of differences. There's differences in the pathology, there's differences in the kind of clinical presentations like the kind of optic neuritis and the kind of transverse myelitis. There's difference in the diagnostic workup and the findings on the diagnosis there's different prognosis, and there's different treatments. And so the remainder of this video is going to be helping you parse them out. There's some very significant differences in the pathology of MS as compared to NMO. MS has an aberrant immune response and the entire immune systems mess up. So all of the adaptive immune system, including both the, the T cells and the B cells, and the innate immune system is all goofy in the setting of MS. NMO, on the other hand, has a problem with the humoral immune system only. So it's really only a problem with the antibodies. NMO doesn't really involve the T cells and doesn't really involve the innate immune response. In multiple sclerosis, the target of the aberrant immune system are the oligodendrocytes. And that's a Scrabble word, which uh, refers to the cells that wrap the plastic coating around the wires. So the oligodendrocytes make the myelin, which is under attack in the setting of MS. There's a different target in the setting of NMO, a different cell in the brain called astrocytes. And so astrocytes are the cells that are directly under attack in the setting of NMO. In the setting of multiple sclerosis, we don't have one autoantibody. I wish we did, where you can test some blood and say, ha ha, that's positive. That doesn't exist in the setting of MS. Whereas 73% of people with NMO test positive for a specific antibody, and that's called the aquaporin-4 channel antibody. And that's a really, really useful test. And it, as I'll talk about a little bit later, that's involved in the diagnostic criteria. Also, when in NMO you have this autoantibody, it activates part of the immune response called complement. And so through complement, you can destroy astrocytes. And that's very different than what you see with oligodendrocytes uh, being damaged and then the rest of the immune system uh, breaking the axons in the setting of MS. When considering symptoms, there's a lot of overlap between MS and NMO. But when you get down to brass tacks, there are some big differences which can help sort the two conditions out. So as I mentioned earlier, both MS and NMO can cause a optic neuritis, but they're not the same thing. Very commonly in the setting of MS, the optic neuritis only affects one eye, and it typically does not result in blindness. And particularly early on in the condition, you can expect a, a near full, if not a full recovery from an MS optic neuritis. When someone with NMO spectrum disorder has an optic neuritis, it's typically very, very different. It can be bilateral, which is almost never ever seen in MS. And the severity of the optic neuritis is extremely different. It's typically profound, as in the person is completely and utterly blind. 
Unfortunately, in the setting of NMO, recovery from optic neuritis is really, really poor. And it's uh, not uncommon that after the first bout of optic neuritis, the person may be permanently blind. Staying on the topic of symptoms, both MS and NMO can cause a transverse myelitis. That's when there's inflammation in the spinal cord, short-circuiting the spinal cord, and causing deficits. In both conditions, you can see leg weakness or numbness, and you can see problems with the down there's, bowel, bladder, and bedroom. NMO, however, tends to have a much more severe transverse myelitis. And in fact, 75% of people with an NMO transverse myelitis do not fully recover. We can expect a better recovery in the setting of multiple sclerosis. If you found some value in this video, do me a kind favor and give it a thumbs up. Oh, Thanks. yeah. Additionally, there are two more symptoms which may be seen in the setting of NMO, which are almost never seen in MS. And that's pathologic hiccups, where someone is hiccuping and they cannot stop, and profound nausea and vomiting. In a quick summary, if you have an optic neuritis with complete and utter blindness or bilateral optic neuritis, and if you have intractable hiccups or intractable nausea and vomiting, those are red flags that we may be dealing with NMO and not multiple sclerosis. When you consider how people with MS get worse, compared to how people with NMO get worse, there are also some differences. In both conditions, you can have attacks. So you can have an MS attack and not fully recover and thereby accrue some disability. We call that relapse associated worsening. And the exact same thing can happen with NMO as I've just described. In MS, however, you can see progression independent from relapse activity. We call that PIRA where someone with MS, completely independent from an attack, will slowly get worse. We don't see that with NMO. Outside of NMO attacks, there isn't really any progression between those events. And that's a big difference between MS and NMO. There are some differences in the demographics of folks with MS versus NMO. Age of onset, for example. The average age of onset in MS is 30 years of age, in NMO, it's 39 years of age, so almost 10 years older. When you think about the female to male ratio, both tend to favor women. In MS, the female to male ratio is about three to one, so three women with MS for every one guy. With NMO, it's much more uh, favor of women five to one, so five women with NMO for every one guy. Now, ethnicity plays a role in both conditions, and if you are African American or Asian American, you tend to have a more severe multiple sclerosis and a more severe NMO. In the setting of NMO, however, it's maybe even worse because African Americans and Asian Americans tend to be diagnosed earlier. As I mentioned, they have a more severe disease. And in fact, in the setting of NMO, mortality is twice amongst African Americans as compared to Caucasians. So according to my YouTube analytics, only half of you watching this video have subscribed. So if you're in that half, thank you. And if you have yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. Thank you. Both people with MS and with NMO can have attacks. I mentioned earlier, attacks of optic neuritis or transverse myelitis as an example, but the character of the attacks are much different. NMO attacks are much worse it's much more common that someone ends up blind after an optic neuritis from NMO. Also, the recovery from transverse myelitis in NMO is typically very, very poor. Now, this is in counterpoint to what you see early on in multiple sclerosis where we can expect a meaningful recovery. When we treat an attack, we oftentimes use IV steroids to start off with both conditions. In the setting of MS, IV steroids can be very, very helpful most of the time. In the setting of NMO, however, not so much, and oftentimes people don't respond very well to steroids, and we have to quickly escalate to receiving total plasma exchange, or phoresis, to help them get better. Diagnostic testing is different in MS and NMO, and we'll start talking about spinal fluid. 90% of people with MS have abnormal spinal fluid, where they will have unpaired oligoclonal bands, or OCBs, and they're always abnormal, whether they're having an attack or not. It's uncommon that someone with NMO has oligoclonal bands or changes on their spinal fluid. And if they do have changes, it's typically transient, only during an NMO attack and not during other times. 
As mentioned earlier, NMO has an antibody. 74-75% of people with NMO will test positive for the aquaporin-4 IgG antibody. Whereas it's almost always negative in the setting of multiple sclerosis, and we don't have a special MS antibody in the same fashion. When you have your blood tested for NMO, that's the aquaporin-4 antibody, or the aquaporin-4 IgG, they're gonna send it to a laboratory. And there's different kinds of laboratory testing that can be done. The kind that we want to have is called cell-based assay, or CBA. That's the kind that you want because it's very, very sensitive. It's really good at picking up NMO. The more common type, the ELISA, is not as sensitive. In fact, it's 1.5 times less sensitive. So make sure when you're having your NMO antibody tested that it's a cell-based assay. Likewise, there are some very stark differences on the imaging of multiple sclerosis and NMO. So as I mentioned, both cases can have an optic neuritis and you can see changes on the MRI, but the NMO optic neuritis looks very different, much more affected, much more bilateral than you might see in the setting of MS optic neuritis. Similarly, transverse myelitis can occur in both conditions but the imaging looks very different. So in MS, you will see very small lesions, where in NMO, you can see what we call longitudinally extensive lesions. And so as you look at the neuroimaging of the two conditions, an astute neurologist can sort them apart. Lastly, the treatment for the two conditions is different. We use a lot of wonderful disease-modifying therapies to slow down multiple sclerosis. Some of those medicines make NMO worse, specifically, Giving someone with NMO interferon beta products like Avonex, Rebif, Extavia, um, beta seron, et cetera, will literally make people with NMO worse. And so knowing that they have NMO and avoiding those drugs is really important. There are several FDA-approved drugs specific for NMO that we would not use in the setting of multiple sclerosis. And if you guys are interested, I'd be happy to make a follow-up video where I do a relatively deep dive looking at the NMO medicines. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment in the section below. Multiple sclerosis and NMO are related conditions, but they're not the same thing. They have different pathology and they have slightly different clinical manifestations. They have different labs and different imaging. And most importantly, they have different treatment. If you have an MS diagnosis, I want to make sure that your neurologist has checked an NMO IgG antibody or an aquaforin-4 antibody. The kind that we want to have is called cell-based assay or CBA. Everyone with an MS diagnosis should have one of those. And if it's positive, then you probably don't have MS and we need to be thinking about NMO. Likewise, if you've suffered an optic neuritis and it left you completely blind, or if you've suffered an optic neuritis that affected both eyes at the same time, that's a red flag. If you have intractable hiccups, or if you have intractable nausea and vomiting, those are red flags. And they should sensitize you and your neurologist that we need to be thinking beyond MS and asking the question, could it be NMO? My name is Aaron Boster, and as always, thank you for learning about MS, and in this case, NMO with me. This has been sort of a 10,000 foot view. And if you would like a deeper dive, maybe looking at some of the imaging characteristics of NMO or the drugs involved, let me know in the section down below and I'd be happy to make that video. If you'd like to up your game, click a video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.